Wild zones began appearing a few years after the fall. There is no consensus on what is causing them. Regions miles across that transformed from lifeless devastation to primeval wilderness in less than a decade. There are those that believe that this is the world healing itself, and some in the new native movement believe that goblins are part of this process and are what has become of humankind that will allow them to thrive in the new world. The goblin settlement of Narek lies on the edge of one of these wild zones. A search party has been sent into the zone in search of six-legged creatures that they hope to use as beasts of burden, or even mounts. They have been on their guard not only against the hazards of the zone, but because the warlord known as Curse has been moving to take over settlements in the area. His scouts are everywhere. All right, let's go uh, full screen, full crew, sir. All right, so all of you have been uh, sent out into the wild zone uh, by the settlement of Nara. And you, you're looking for scouts in this area that were hunting, had located, uh, they'd seen six-legged beasties. And they're thinking, I shouldn't use the term beastie because that means anthropomorphics, uh, creatures. And they thought, well, those might make good mounts or at the very least beasts of burden. Let's go get us some of those. And you've been out here for a couple of days looking for evidence of those. Uh, none of you were on the expedition that, that saw them. Uh, so you don't have any direct evidence. And so far you've come up dry. So you've camped for the night. Uh, you're in an old gas station. Everything in a wild zone is wildly overgrown. So part of the effect, uh, the fall, uh, the apocalypse, was a combination of bombs uh, that were both, uh, some of them were radioactive and some of them were bioweapons. The combination of that seems, among other things, to have triggered wild zones. In a wild zone, everything is overgrown, and not just with normal plants, outsized plants, uh, mutated plants, strange things. They draw uh, all kinds of mutated wildlife, and you're there. So the gas station is all completely overgrown. So the bones of it are still there. Um, so you can see the frame of it. It's safe. You, one of you checked, the gas is long gone. So the tanks, there's no, t <laughs> you don't want to light a cook fire around not completely empty tanks. So you verified that shit and uh, it's fine. Um, there was some salvage here, but not much. It's very clearly someplace that's been ransacked. So you, the first thing you do is you go in the front, like, I'm looking for sandals and beanies and like nothing. So there were a few things in the back where there's a little bit of a repair facility. So you've got like a little box of screws and some other stuff that you managed to take away. Uh, at the point where we start play, all uh, six of you are, I'm sorry, five. The sixth person is me. Um, you're just finishing your dinner. Uh, we're going to say that that's actually a, we had a treat. You had an old can of beans and you had bits of um, something that, that's a little like a raccoon, uh, but it is like nastier and tougher. So you had to cook it for a long time because it's extra chewy. Um, so we'll start descriptions with uh, Professor Proctor. What do you look like, sir? Hello. I am Professor Proctor. I'm pretty human compared to the rest of these guys. You know, a lot of time in the radiation zones, I've lost most of my hair, but it's okay. I still look very handsome. But um, I'm taller than some of these goblins, but uh, not so tall as Buck. He's very tall. I'm, I'm not, not, too, not too outside the average for being, you know, human. Any obvious mutations? Well, nothing that most would see, I, other than the hair, obviously. I've, I've right. lost, you know, what was important. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. I, I, the, the, the visual things, only really at night, uh, you would notice with my eyes, with the glowing, is, is uh, very interesting. Is why I, You're saying I, the radiation made you handsomer? Yes, of course. That's awesome. Just, what kind of uh, weapons? In. Any obvious weapons you're carrying? Well, I don't go anywhere without my trusty crossbow. It's a very, very useful. Anytime you need to collect raccoon creature for dinner is good. Yeah. And this is very likely a, a post-apocalypse rebuilt, like spring off a car kind of crossbow. Not oh, yeah. a, I got it at Walmart or REI kind of sport fiberglass crossbow. 
Uh, no, it's no, gnarly, no, no. It's gnarly as hell. Uh, yes, all right. Yes. Uh, Bach, you are the only person present who is physically larger than the professor. And what do you look like? Uh, I'm, I'm like a goblin that was put in the microwave and expanded. So I'm twice <laughs> as big as your average goblin, uh, twice as just bigger than that professor there. And uh, I got a few more, uh, smaller than a your average bear probably, but has more horns than your average bear. Of course out here, some bears have more horns than others, but I've got these sweet elbow spikes. <laughs> Do you consider the term troll reductive? No, no, it's bigger. <laughs> uh, all right, and uh, good call. <laughs> what do you look like? Uh, well, um, I suppose I look like the most perfect of goblin specimens, which I happen to find um, very attractive and very interesting. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm very authentic. I have uh, green skin. Um, I have very bright red hair. Um, I have big tusks which you can kind of see, but they go different directions, which I think is a, a very attractive sort of thing that you can do. Uh, and uh, uh, when I get pissed off, I bleed from my eyes, which happens relatively frequently. So I feel like my eyes are just kind of always stained. I, could, I, I take offense to things a little bit more um, frequently than maybe other people might. Uh, and you don't largely carry the weapons or wear the clothes of man, right? So it's homespun and like hides and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Whatever I can really, just sort of, yeah. It's not really scavenged. It's more crafted. I find that our authentic culture uh, needs to be represented by authentic things. So that includes uh, using the animals that are in our realm and uh, um, really wearing them and, uh, and becoming part of the, the, new, the new representation of, of the world. I mean, we're the new generation, we're the new, we're the new stuff. So uh, everybody better get used to it. And so sitting next to uh, Grimclaw, Listening to a political screed kind of lecture uh, over <laughs> over bits of bean uh, tricks. What do you look like? You are muted, sir. I'm very small for a goblin. I'm little tiny, tiny, and I have this really big lightning gun. I made it myself. I'm building power armor. It's going to be a maze tales when I get it finished. It's going to squish all the bad guys. And I have two rows of teeth, so it's real easy to chomp on the meats. But I had to cook it more for them because they don't have the extra teeth. So they're not as evolved yet. But especially the human, I feel bad for him because he's going to die with the poison and the radiation. And we not. But it's okay. We still, you know, he's, a, he's an okay guy, I guess. And when I find stuff that I can add to my power armor, that's great. But sometimes I find things that I can put inside of people. And that's where Tufer comes in. So I can stick stuff inside of her. Which takes us directly to Tufer, who is described as follows. Hi, I'm Tufer. Um, I'm a goblin. My parents were goblins. My grandparents were goblins. Very goblin. Um, I like to brawl i like um i'm strong i um i'm covered in cybernetics uh, but they're all a little mm, ill-fitting but that's okay because as long as they make me fast and as long as they make me strong it doesn't matter what they look like yep so i like to this, throw uh, diverse group of um mostly goblins and goblin adjacent folk uh sitting enjoying a meal uh, tricks, you've definitely figured out that there's nothing for your armor here. Probably a little disappointed about that. Um, getting ready to settle down for the evening. You explored long enough that you don't feel that pressing on to the night is going to give you much of a benefit. Uh, you don't, despite the somewhat racist presumption that you can see in the dark, it's a, it's a gaming holdover. People assume you have night vision, but you don't. Uh, so you need light like everybody else. So late at night, you're not going to do as well searching as you're going to during the day. Uh, who has the highest number of dice for notice? 
Mm, I have five. <clears throat> I have five. It's probably Professor Proctor who notices everything. The professor so has seven, seven. Seven. Very Proctor. noticing. Proctor, go ahead and give me a notice check, please. Giving so you notice. Se seven dice. You're on notice. Now, this time I am rolling the notice and I have, wow, I have two sixes I have noticed. So there are in the area, the overgrown area that you're in, there's uh, old defunct gas pumps. And there's also uh, several cars that were abandoned also overgrown. You hear something moving through the underbrush. Uh, you think it disturbed one of the cars, being kind of a, a metallic kind of a scratching. Uh, with two successes, I'm going to give you that you look over there and you see a thing, picture a cross between a cockroach and a rat the size of a small dog. How many legs does it have? You start counting, but it quickly vanishes into the underbrush. Drink dinner, din after dinner aperitif just got away. What? Why you let it get away? Well, I was trying to count the legs. So We're here to collect things with many legs and not shoot the things with many legs. We don't eat those, we ride those. I heard two five five dice. So you got a lot of good perception in the group. Uh, so what I'm going to say is rather than rolling, uh, the camera pulls back. We kind of track the eye line of where the professor was looking, but then we see all the, the green kind of moving, carpet-like, disturbed by all the things underneath. So I am going to need everyone to roll their speed dice and have them together. I will go around and ask you for the total. Bach, what you got? Uh, are we counting sixes? I got two sixes. So you're adding all the dice together. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, 10, 23. So you have an initiative of 23. Proctor? 20, 5, 10, 15, 18. 18. 18. Nice. Adding wrong, we get 18. Two per. 25. Nice. And Grimclaw? 28. And Trix? I have strategically decided to be the slowest person with a 16. <laughs> well done. Uh, all right, so. Someone's got to take that hit. Grimclaw, you, you are pretty much always ready to go, and you see the movement, and you see that there are, one of you, I believe, has uh, the Feed Creature catalog. Uh, that would be the professor again. Okay, this, those this things are literally called roach rats. So oh. things in nuked tend to be named the obvious. It's usually what somebody yells before they die. So they go, ah, roach rats. Like that becomes the name. Hey. Um, so it's a very you, Avatar last there, banter right there. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are, are hyper vermin. Like they are uh, in abandoned zones like this, especially with so much like all the plant life and old rotting things, having an infestation is not unusual. They don't have any special weaknesses, but you know they attack in swarms. Ooh. So to expect a lot of them. So hopefully you don't have like a uh, fear of roaches or rats because it, it's coming. So um, Grimclaw, do you want to do something about this? Um. I mean, other than make sure that everybody else is aware of what's going on. Uh, yeah, I suppose I would take out my spear because that's my specialty weapon. Yeah. And uh, I can I take a couple of steps forward and try to stab at one of them? You bet. Fabulous. What do I need so to do So in game that? terms, for those that didn't know what this is, uh, everything is currently close range. Close range is the size of like a kid's park it's, or, or like a parking lot of a big box store. It close means it's uh, sorry near near means it's in the area you want to close into close to do hand to hand Correct. that requires maneuvering which is one of your simple actions you maneuver and you go pokey pokey uh give me a um brawl melee all right that's up there that's six uh i have one five for a partial success no six okay 
So the way that works is you're going to roll your damage, and then we're going to divide that by two, rounding up. Uh, so that's a pokey pokey. Unfortunately, they have an armor of five against that. So roll your dice for the spear. Yeah, it's the, the roach shells, unfortunately. Uh, and every die that scores a five or higher is going to score damage. Ah, but only half. Oh, my chances. Not so great. That's all right. <laughs> uh, I have two sixes. Okay. So the other thing about sixes is sixes explode. So that means, uh, is your crit two for the spear? My crit is two, correct. Okay, so they're going to do the two dice, the two points they always do. So that's four points, two extra for the crits. So that's eight already. But then you get to roll the two sixes again. Because they're, so, they're all exploding. Love get them, boss. Uh, another six and then a four. Good Lord. So that's, uh, you're up to 12. I really damage. killed the hell out of this thing. I really did. And you can re-roll the six again. You can keep doing that till it stops rolling sixes. I've, I like this so mechanic. All... This is fun. That was a one. Never mind. Okay. But you, so you do, <laughs> to the little creature that had six hits, you, you come in and it is just, so do you want to like impale it and raise it up on the spear or just like cut it in half with the edge of it or... I think for the first one, I want to sort of like stab it into the ground and then pick it up so it's still attached to the spear. And we'll see how many I can skewer onto it before they start splitting in half and falling off. A handy way to keep them. Yes, yeah, so yeah. It, it's all <laughs> bad at the end of the spear. Um, okay, so Tooper, that was an excellent opening opening move. What do you got? Um, what is around me that is per se throwable? Uh, there, there's rocks. Uh, there is uh, a, a, an old uh, um, gym bag that's got a bunch of crap in it. Uh, there's, if you're going to go like super strong, there's a gas pump. Um, there's that sounds oh, good. Yeah. I want to, can I eat a so gas you, pump? Okay, you don't have that feet, but you want to pry loose the gas I pump. Hurl it. I gave you hurling, right? <laughs> Yeah. I think so. You literally have training. Okay, so this is going to be cinematic action because you're going to be literally prying the gas pump and then throwing that shit. So that's fine. Uh, give me a strength test with two extra dice. Uh, strength, 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 strength. So uh, the yeah. cyborg goblin goes up to the gas pump and there's a... Right, a with two extra going. dice, say you. Where is strength? Why are these things so tiny? Under athletics. Under athletics. On the right oh, hand side. Okay. With two extra. Okay. You are the one flew over the cuckoo's nuts, Indian. One six. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you that it doesn't fail, but all you get this round is you. Oh, hold on. I wasn't done rolling. Oh, well, the finishing rolling will help. Two sixes. You got your sixes. <laughs> All right, so you pull, you pull the thing. Um, go ahead and give me a uh, hurl. Good stuff. All right. Always makes me think of a few things, but that's not what right. it is. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. I've had to make a hurl oh, test in my life. I know. So far, two fives and a six. <laughs> a six. That means you hit. So I'm going to make that hit a small area because it's you, you threw a whole pump. So okay. go ahead and roll four dice for me against uh, the, anything that scores a three or better to score damage. One. Three. Three score damage and no sixes? Yes. So that's six, which is enough to kill two of them. So uh, there is, and there's, I'm going to say that there's just enough uh, <laughs> residual guzzoline inside the whole mechanism of the thing. But when you throw it, it makes a spark and there's a little bit of a explosion. So that's gonna kill a third one. Uh, so Grimclaw, two thirds does manage to best you only in that boom. And you see one go through the air. Uh, all right. Uh, way, to, way to represent Tufa, way to, way to represent <laughs> the strength of a species. I really appreciate that. It was very well done, very well done. This is real fun, boss. So Bach. Oh my God. There's still a bunch of these things out here. What are you going to do? All right. Well, I'm just going to 
make way in whatever wedge formation that Grimclaw is leading with, I suppose, and just <laughs> it's coming so just catch some it sort of, through it. Yeah, yeah. Just some sort of def, you know edge up and get my heavy basher out, and uh, I'm just gonna golf swing some of these. Some I, of these I, guys. Oh yeah, I can easily picture the kind of almost like uh, using a scythe, just smash, I, smash, little point. <laughs> uh, I got two successes out of a six. Sweet. Uh, roll your damage. All right. And with Against the basher, it's only a three defense. So anything three or higher see. scores damage. All right. We got uh, four dice on the heavy basher. Uh, boop. Uh, two fives and a two and a one. So it's going to be two hits. Okay. That's going to be, uh, but you've got an extra success. I'm going to give it to you. You, you smash one. You pulp it. All right, then it's my turn before Proctor and Tricks connect. So it's that many down. Um, are the three of you that are out front kind of trying to protect the, the doc and the tech? No. I mean, why? I'm just having fun. I thought this was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that, I, 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 I had a like thought of. Of maybe he's trying to, you know, die because he's a human. Forming it, so. trying to form some sort of uh, wall or wedge, you know. So yeah, I suppose they're behind us <laughs> if they're smart. I mean, I, I feel like accidentally tricks... protecting. Yeah, trouble and fight on this one. Here. Not organized. All right, so here comes some attacks. Uh, Grimclaw. Uh, that's going to be a partial, which is only going to do one hit to you. Ah, ow, that sucked. Uh, there's a secondary uh, effect, but you're immune to radiation, so it does not affect you. Oh, hooray. Fuck, miss. Trooper, that's a hit with extra success. Uh, what's your defense against uh, slashing the second one? Uh, against slashing, five. Okay, so only one gets through. That's you're gonna take two points of damage, and you have to make uh, you're also immune to radiation, so never mind. Uh, all right, and then tricks. I got a partial. Uh, you're gonna take one hit, Professor Proctor. This is the one that we're worried about because he's not, although they miss. All right, so apparently the accidental defending of the professor worked. Because the red roaches do not attack him. And you, having creature catalog, that's a feat that lets you know known creatures in the area. So you know that their bites can cause radiation sickness. So you also know that trolls and goblins are immune to radiation damage. So the only person here vulnerable to these things is you. Hey, great, me. great. That's, this, is, this is good, of course. So yes, it is now always the professor. Proctor's <laughs> turn. <clears throat> okay, well, <laughs> Proctor is going to do everything he can not to be target. I noticed that Proctor has an advance called dodge. What, how, how is dodge going to help him today? Uh, so in this case, you won't need to use it because that's a way to like jump in with evade. You should spend your round using the evade action, which means if I, I attack you, you get to make an evade check and just not... I am definitely it. evading. <laughs> I, I am evading while moving. they are invading. Moving into the invisible, like, uh, triangle between <laughs> ally combatants to be yes, in the middle of this, them. Yes, okay. this is the thing that I will do. Perfect. Uh, all right, so he goes into clearly defensive mode. Trix, what are you doing? So is assist a complex action or a simple action? It's your whole action. So you, you could help, though. So do you want to try to help somebody? Well... If it was like a simple action, I was going to assist the professor, but I don't want to give up my entire action for it. Don't help okay. him. He doesn't need you. Just, just well, he you can be. He does. He's not as good as we are. Well, that's okay. That's because he's not a <laughs> goblin. Don't worry about Why? him. Why? That's what I'm saying. So what do you do? Um, I guess I'll shoot the one that's attacking the professor. Okay. So go ahead and make your shoot roll. And is that going to be close or near? Uh, it's going to still be near. So the second one. Okay. So two sixes. Okay, so you lightning gun the thing? Yeah. 
Its defense against energy is three. So roll your dice. Anything three or higher is a hit. I think your crit is also ghastly, right? Um, it's four. Oh my god. All right. I only got one, but I will reroll that six and get a one. So, so that's gonna be I two do two points plus the four will be six points. So no, no, no. It's you said that their defense was a what? Their armor is a what? Energy is three. Three. So I have to exceed that or equal or exceed? Three or higher. Three or higher. So it takes two, four, six, eight, twelve. It explodes. So he literally, <laughs> he's, he's carrying a bundle of capacitors bigger than he is. He like kind of drags the thing along and he leans it forward and there's a loud noise and like a smell that charred air smell and a bolt of energy lashes out, hits one, it vibrates for a second and just bursts. I envision it like the Ghostbusters guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, Grimclaw, you I'm standing in front of him going like, for fuck's sake, man, can you please like aim better? I mean, like, thanks, but for gee, God I think also as you turn around, there's like creature gripping off of you. Yeah, it's just like. <sighs> it's your action though, you back, you back up. Right, so, oh God. Um, I definitely don't want to be in the line of fire of anybody else. But so you, you move point. out of his way a little. Yeah, <laughs> like shift over to the left. Probably closer to Tufa. Uh, Fair. And uh, yeah, I want to see if I can stab another one uh, and, and see if I can sort of slide them up the, the pole. Do it. In fact, you do. Uh, right. I know they're in the melee. You put a second one in. So definitely, I think, is true of role-playing games in general. But we, we say it explicitly in Nuked is mechanics are when the outcome of an action is uncertain to find out what happens. Can you put a second one in your spear? Fucking yes, you can. So we don't need to roll because we've established that you can do that shit. So nice. there's two, which looks super cool. At that point, uh, there are too few of them to have the, the tiny mutant testicles to continue attacking you. So as you <laughs> fire at them as they withdraw, the carpet of horrible creatures nopes out and, and crawls into whatever crevices they can to escape you. Uh, oh, man. I, I assume Bro there's some Bro more Trax weapons fire. Testicles sounds like a delicacy. <laughs> it, the problem is like grape nuts. It, it's so much effort to collect enough to yes, be eaten. Nice. Those poor grapes, too. Uh, I'll just like run my finger like down Trix's arm. I'm like, <laughs> oh god! No, no, no! Uh, don't do it. We have to rise above this. We have to rise above our, our lower baser instincts and and become the better thing. Don't don't eat just the random it, stuff on the ground. We not, still have to eat I, though. Well, so, we did. Well, all right, fair enough. Can <laughs> I charge after another one and just? And he's gonna try to it. scrabble down the hole and she gets just gonna it. just try to gah! I'm gonna imagine the professor climbs out from under a car or something. <laughs> Recording Goblin Fighting Tactics Chapter 3. Big one, not as effective as I had thought, but very amazing to see Metal One throw a giant gasoline tank is is good for getting rid of roach rats. Must consider this in future dissertation on combat against small creatures in general. Is are you a sketcher? Any... Does your journal have like sketches of what you've seen or are you entirely longhand? Uh, <laughs> probably probably when we have time to sit down and, and write, you know. I may make drawings later. For now, I record the moment of, of inspiration. I mean, so, goddamn prime directive, whatever. Yeah. Uh, several hours later, morning comes. Uh, everyone is better rested. Anybody that took damage has it back. Uh, oh, hit I damage is basically even shorter than short rest to get that back. Uh, it's only when you start taking injuries that it's slower to recover. Uh, and then if you're unlucky enough to take wounds, those are serious. They take real time to get but I just want to make sure that overnight I make sure to tell everyone, especially the professor, about the time that I was attacked by giant shrimp dogs, which are way worse than <laughs> roach rats. And I just slaughtered them. It was great. You should have seen it. You should have been there. It was amazing. Shrimp dogs. 
I think thing. whenever Tufer like talks to the professor, she's she basically like is bullshitting all the time. Like, <laughs> like the favorite music of goblins is opera, like specifically like 18th century opera. I'm Anything tell- that she says, I will totally back her up 100. Like, oh yeah, totally. Absolutely. We're Verdi. totally, totally just yeah, just just. I mean, it's all about Beethoven. You'd be surprised at how much we actually fall into listening to Beethoven after. On a meta level, I kind of like the idea that I'm in an almost Mother Night way. At some point, Grimclaw forgets something bullshit and ends up incorporating it. Like, ends up picking up an opera, opera record. It forgets that it was nonsense. Yeah, you know, like Tosca is sort of an acquired taste, but I actually really <laughs> like it. It's really good. It's got I great... mean, I think it's rocking. Rocking because because it's better grand, than Dragon Force. And you like the night stuff. There's this band Nightwish, but they do like musical stuff. It's weird. I'll, I'll have to show you later. You should see the Phantom of the Opera, man. It's surprisingly good and and great. Like you know, makeup and everything is just really fun. I always kind of pictured goblins liking ska. <laughs> I don't but know we're not going to tell him that. Do you no doubt. Do <laughs> them ranking and skanking and doing like madness dance and stuff. Like it just, I don't know, just uh, Blink One Eighty Two. I'm just <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just the rabbit. I'm the rabbit from Blink One Eighty Two. So never mind got, the bullets. Here come the goblins. Who's got the best landlord? <laughs> the best what? Landlord. It's in the lower left oh, under Sir. I have three. Probably Hopefully not, not Proctor. Oh, I saw time. that. So I see I a four. four. Is Grimclaw the best? Uh, actually, we're both really good. How are we both really good at all these skills? I'm surprised that you, I mean, I'm not surprised that you're smart because obviously you're one of us, just a bigger, but like, I'm I'm, <laughs> not su- I'm just surprised that you're really skilled. That's kind of so impressive. Either of you can roll and we'll get a bonus die because you're working together. Real quick, um, since I have assist two, I know it normally is like during combat, I can do it every round or whatever. It is can I just use combat. it in general? No, it's an entirely a combat skill. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, Bach, if you want to do that, go for it. I'm, I'm going to make you do Got that. Got two sixes. Okay. Boom. So, uh, and that's used for things like survival, nature, tracking, things like that. So, uh, you use the landlord sure and you're pursuing these six legged <laughs> creatures, uh, looking for evidence of them. So far, nothing. Uh, you're out there for another uh, three to four hours. Uh, it is um, early summer, so it's a little sweltering. Uh, it wild zones in the summer end up having a little bit of like jungle swamp vibe, like where the air tastes alive. Like it's it's when the air gets chewy and the sweat feels like it will never come off of you. It's it's got that kind of shit. And about the goblins that, love this stuff. No one has to roll. Sweaty undercarriage. You all feel a vibration of something large having made a step. Did everybody feel that or is just, am I glitching? No, 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 that was real. That was, that was something. Oh. What kind of creatures could be large enough to make a step that would shake all of us? I'm wondering with You've my creatures. You've got a list of about 30. I was like, what? I feel like you would be able to answer that question, sir. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, and uh, there's another step. And again, there's no. the... If you had a cup, Tyrannos- yeah. If you had like a chicken. cup of water, there'd be a yeah. Tyrannosaurus chicken. I'm pretty sure, but that's really the same thing because, as we know, chickens. I mean, the, the little tiny arms just sort of went off to the sides and became wings. And it was I'm thinking good. cover is a good idea. I mean, yeah. I know that you're probably big enough to arm wrestle this thing, Buck, but uh, I would prefer if maybe perhaps we observe from distance to get more detail for book. Yeah. I'm all right with I mean, doing the sort of uh, observing of things from afar and, uh, you know, being Steve Irwin here for a minute if we have to. Oh, man. Fine. Are, are, are there trees that we could use for cover? So yeah. given the fact that Bach got two successes, I can give you that you can point out, like, there's some place over there we can get a little cover. Also, if something's that big, they'll be looking down. So you want something that'll be over you that you can hide. Uh, and you, there is uh, a small starter home that's got like a covered parking, so you could hide under that. So picture like a, a lame little cutter house with the little covered parking thing, and that's all overgrown with vines and stuff. 
So it's kind of perfect. Like it's very easy to slide under that. Ooh, it's so a bungalow. <laughs> let's do there's, that. There's another impact every couple of seconds. So something very large moving slowly. You are now all on the little, almost like Ursat's cave. And uh, there is something massive wandering around the area. Like they don't sound like directed footsteps. They sound like something's just wandering around. All right. Is it wandering and just, we can only hear the footsteps? So does it like wander and snuffle? Is it, is it looking for something? What are we so thinking? Has anyone got a good stealth? Because you could easily go to ground and try to get a little closer. Or go up to the roof and take a look. I have three. Three? Three? Anybody got a good stealth? We great, got no stealth, sneaky dude. pants up. Apparently this group of goblins not so great at stealth. Three. Not so great at sneaky. I have a bad plan. All right. I love it. I love it already. <laughs> I'll, we'll wait a little bit. If it gets kind of close and we think it's coming for all of us, I'll run and then it'll like focus on me and then everybody can jump it from behind. I can shoot it. And at this point, you hear the loudest yippy dog yip you've ever heard. So Maybe it's we should like an annoying, quieter. an annoying Giant. little purse dog yip and attach like Rammstein speakers to it and make it like a fuck ton of decibels. So there's just this, <laughs> yeah! Like, yeah. It says I was a fear the most. It's mega Pekingese. <laughs> wow. So what do you do? I I, I, I like fresh out of di giant doggy treats. I, I, I like my really bad plan. So I'm good with I, I'm the really bad just, plan. Just go for it. I'm good with the really bad plan. plan. You dress plan like box? frisbee. I'm just I'm just gonna run straight out and just like in a like if I can. There's like a big open area with maybe something else on the other side of the open area so that it sees me and then I can maybe dive into something else. Absolutely. Oh. But wow. how green are you and how much do you resemble a tennis ball right now? <laughs> <laughs> so when he comes uh, out, we see... 100%. So I'm thinking uh, the kind of weirdly processed scale they used in uh, uh, Honey, I Blew Up the Kids. Yes. Like that kind of like... You got the impression, but it was terrible. Uh, there is an enormous feral chihuahua what these things are called chihuahuas uh c-h-e-e-w-o-a chihuahua chihuahua uh, and they are the biggest purse dogs ever bred uh and they're they're this they're like 12 feet I, I would have preferred to make a Pekingese. you can at least reason with them <laughs> chihuahuas no no we're so, doing sorry it was nice knowing you buck I need the four of you that are not Bach to make uh, stealth rolls with two extra dice, and all you need is a partial. So all I really need to know is if you manage to not Wait, score. Should be running this way. <laughs> should be running this way. <laughs> okay, Professor got one six. So you're thank you have... for two extra dice. <laughs> yeah, I have two sixes. I have succeeded. Nothing for Duper. How about tricks? And a partial. That's enough. So the way I see this is, I need... Hoover is overexcited. Might want to pet big doggy. So, Bach, you're going to need a run test. No, no. Okay. Boom. There we go. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, let's see. Did I, did I see it or am I just running? Oh, I think you walk, look out, you see it, and run. Okay. Unless you change, I, change your mind. Eventually, I'm going to probably just... Uh, oh, I have six run. Here we go. Here we go. What do we got? Uh, with only one success, though. Whew. So uh, it sees you moving, and its attention is drawn to you. It moves a little less tentatively your direction, but is not running. <laughs> you look back, and your companions have all run away, except for Tooper, who doesn't look entirely sold on the idea of running away, uh, and is kind of looking back where you are. I'm torn. <laughs> uh, I'm going to stop, get my, get ready my bat and just 
I, I'm probably more incredulous that it's a chihuahua. It lets, <laughs> it lets out another yip and then sort of Cujo moths drip, drip, drip. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna hold my ground if it comes at me. I'm gonna bat this thing like uppercut style. So, Trooper, are you going back and backing up Bach? Or are you going? I'm gonna go back up Bach. Yeah. Okay. So I'll go back to the three of you that have fled the moment because you'll realize that the fleeing was not entirely successful. Damn but it. for for a moment, it's definitely gonna be Bach with Trooper right behind. It. It is bigger than a Nissan Sentra, yes. It, 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 oh, yeah, there's the standard, the, the Sentra standard of measure. It is about six Sentras. Okay. Um, as a mass <laughs> measurement, not a size measurement. It's a six Sentra monster. So Bach, it... Maybe the shotgun would be better. ...is going to... <laughs> the head comes down. You're not sure if it's going to bite you or not. Are you just going to bang it on the nose? Did just boop it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to bite me. Uh, oh, the then I, it doesn't oh, look like it's going to bite me. Do you wait long enough to find out? Is the Would the bat fit in its mouth? Could I do like a little... Yes, it... because because that's ridiculous and I love it. Okay. Um, I'm, if I'm not sure if it's actually going to try to bite me, I might go for the bunt action and if it like opens its mouth, I'm gonna like try to do the jam and then the mouth thing. So, so give uh, me a reaction save. All right. Ooh. Reaction. Let's see. How many? One success. Okay. Ooh. So it is not biting you. It's in fact nosing you again, <laughs> like you would a ball. So it kind of does this, but its head. Like, you know, it. you're pretty small. So you made your reaction, though. I get to roll to hit. You can change your action. Do you want to run, evade, hit it? So it is attacking me. <laughs> well, I mean, depends on what you think Nosing. about being nosed by a giant chihuahua. Nose. I get a sudden urge to jump on this thing. So give me a reaction to jump initiative because technically you're not up yet in the narrative initiative, but this makes sense. You make the roll, you you come like from off screen, like Yahoo! <laughs> if I can see her running up, I will actually do a little like, hey, look at me, doggy. And just to try to like, because I'm like, maybe she's gonna stab it in the back. I don't know, so but she has a plan. Forget so the rolls because I like. <laughs> So you back up. Tufer. So it knows you, but before it can knows you, Tufer, yahoo! I am going to need brawl melee, though, to land, to stick the landing. Okay, I don't need, like, jump or cybernetic leg. Um, just, just the... Just got the cybernetic legs. Oh, yeah. All right. We show off the fact that the legs are capable of compressing for right. basically super leaps. Yeah. So the goblin goes... <laughs> Oh God, she turned into a kangaroo again. Oh, I got a lot of better springs in those legs. I can fix that. That's <laughs> true. 260. 260. All right, you will land wherever you like. Do you want to land on the head, the neck? I want to land like, yeah, on the neck, like right behind. And my whole plan is to like land, grab some fur and then start scratching behind the ear. So it doesn't nose you. And in fact, <laughs> kind of does the curious dog walking in a circle thing. Uh, the other three Giant of you are on a little it. hill off at uh, near far range. So you did what you need to do. You got out of combat. You're over there. And you look back and you see two birds riding on its neck. And it's it's like looking for the carpet. And Bach seems to be just like taking it in. <laughs> Shut up, the way. So I am going to need from Tufer. Uh, this all seems very Animal right. handling, a oh, wrong game. Beastmaster. Yes. Yes. Beast mastery. Beast mastery. Oh, mastery. Oh, mastery. I'm going to give you a bonus die because, come on. I love the puppy. <laughs> oh, one. That, that's, yay, six. So success. It. <laughs> 
make a reaction save. It would be great to make this save. Oh no. Well, now you've gone and cursed me. All right. <laughs> you can do um. it too for, I have faith in your goblin abilities. With dogs, I don't know. We're good. <laughs> you made it? Yeah. Okay. So the others were it. ones. It, it, so you made it, you made one six? One. Okay, that's fine. Uh, as long as you make one to succeed, it's important because it's reaction to being scritched and you, you landed the scritch landing right. is to roll over and, oh, no. and do like scratch a dog pose, right? It's genetic. So as it's doing that, the camera, I think, would follow you as you're about to be squishified by ecstatic dog, which is a great band name, by the way. And uh, you jump and roll. It's a goblin ska band. All right. Woohoo! So, Bach Trooper comes rolling up next to you. <laughs> now, would does that give me the opportunity to actually rub its belly? I, I don't see how it would not. Okay, so as you go by, I, I tag out. <laughs> I tag in, you tag out, and I jump on it and... <laughs> I, since I'm shorter than you, but I have my, like, springy legs, I'm totally going to, like, compress. I like... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm cool. actually going to go up high, as high as I can oh, go, yeah. just, to see how, just to see how high you can actually do that. <laughs> like, oh, my God. So the upshot of this encounter is, and I assume the party will return. Yeah, I'll come um, over. Yeah. It will bore of this real quick, but has lost its taste for aggression with you. So it's certainly not domesticatable, but you're able to placate it enough or the, the big, terrible chihuahua will wander away going to look for food somewhere else. What if, and hear me out, <laughs> what if I put a thing in its brain that controls it and then we could ride on it? I mean, you would, you would need about a month and a lot of cybernetic supplies I and a I'm lab. Them. I feel like that's a, I appreciate it. I appreciate like, it, Trix. It's a, it's a long term plan. Um, I think right now our objectives are a little bit more on, on, the, on the smaller scale of things with, with things with six legs. But I think we could work our way up to four legs eventually. I mean, we're all very intelligent things. We, we, we can, I think, that, I think that it's a good long term plan, but not so much the right now plan. So we should put so on this his head now so I can see where to put the thing. Not right now. We'll, it doesn't we'll work that way. Now, wait. This was not the thing that we were supposed to find a ride. No, we I need this with six legs. Six it, legs. It's two legs too count. short. We were looking for six legs, not four. Do, do you know how to count? I thought you were smart. Six, one, six two, is three, one more. more than three. Six, six is one more than the fingers on hand. And they hey, you, don't, you don't need to tell him how to count. They describe something like mule size, not like a chihuahua the size of a house. The we, thing we we're can looking for is like the big a red half dog a neon Sentra. Yeah, half a neon right. Sentra. Right. right. Professor Proctor, recording, Encounter 36. Oh my God. Goblins use interesting technique to defeat giant Chihuahua. Very unusual. We'll have to document further. That's true. There are a lot of scratches and, and belly rubbings. Uh, all right. So after lunch later that early afternoon, uh, you encounter a dead creature lying in the brush. Is it edible? Uh, it's fairly, it, it is. In fact, uh, the professor with his ability knows that this thing is called a moosh. It is a spineless moose. So it ends up being, it moves kind of like uh, a worm because it has to pull itself along because oh. the lack of a spine. That's a horrible visual. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. That was the point. And, uh, oh. so it's you like know, a moose slug. It's, kind it's, of. It's, yeah. it's a slushy moose. It's a moosh. So it's, it's, uh. The professor knows the meat is tender and tasty because it has amazing marbling. Of course. It gets a lot of it exercise pulling that moose size along. Does it still have horns, though? Did they, did they... Yes. Hey, Rocky. I'd imagine they're a little soft, also. <laughs> oh, so they like flop around like they got cartilage in them? Floppy horns. <laughs> 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 
So uh, you, are you going to? Uh, I, I think it is time harvest? to to guess. This yeah. is dinner, lunch, and at least a couple of snacks for Bach. Would that be under <clears throat> beastmastery or forage? Uh, no, uh, can for, we, no need for a roll here. Uh, also, can we here, tell what killed it? So I was going to say, as you approach it, you see all of the crossbow bolts sticking out of it. Oh. oh. Oh, hey, free crossbow bolts. Well, well sir, I did, I, why didn't I, you tell I, us that you shot a moosh? I wish I had. I shot really a moosh, do. Shot I, a moosh. Can you do the fandango? So, I have a lightning gun, very, very frightening you. Are you going to cook the moosh? An, another another opera they like. Excellent. Yes. Um, so, yes, <laughs> I, I think uh, first we should find out who shot the moosh because they'll be coming after dinner. Oh, it wasn't you? No, so, these are not my bolts. Mine, imagine, mine have, have my name on them. You look around and you see that not only fully hiding, but having withdrawn uh, are the hunters. And the hunters, yeah. uh, there are four of them and they are effectively kind of centaurs. So picture centaurs where all all six legs are are basically hands. So the feet are hands. There's no hooves. The front, the top ones are hands. All the ones in the back, they all have hands. So it's currently some of them have all six limbs on the ground. Some of them are leaning back, and then the front arms are like human arms. So their torsos are long and flexible. And the necks so are long and flexible. So when they rock back with that upper body, they have the two arms up here, and the head, almost a little like a snake, sits on top where a person's head was. But if they're kind of in running mode, they're down, and the head is almost horse position, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's very unlikely looking. Uh, the face is also extended, and they have a bit of a snout, a little horse like. And they have manes, and the manes go all the way down the back. Ah, uh, okay. It's not mantipede then. It's not. It's not mantipede like it's I was a, thinking. But More like a, mantar. But it's a little like that because the way with the six limbs and the fact that their hands rather than feet, it's a little inhuman centipede-ish. Uh, definitely not inhuman centipede. We do not want to see that in this show. <laughs> we no. do not. No. Yeah. Second cycle. Um, <laughs> they're wearing uh, primitive, they're dressed a little like uh, Grimclaw. They have hides, they have stuff they've made, uh, including the crossbows. You and, found the missing link. Am, I, am, I familiar, am, am, no. am I familiar with these creatures? No, and Not it's possible the scouts that you sent saw these and misidentified them and assumed they might be mounts. Two first, just there going one, two, three, four, five, six. One, yeah, two, yeah, I, I have, I have thought of that as well. Uh, I would be curious rather to to talk to them about this first and maybe see if there's some kind of arrangement we can get in the mounting process because maybe there's mutual mounting that could go on just in a different way. So they're kind of watching. Well, I can just see what you'll do. Meow. I'm I'm good with I'm good with trade. You never know. Hello. So a minor point. Um, you've all been speaking Kuj. We'll assume that the communication has all been in the goblin language. Uh, Proctor also speaks Pooch. If oh. you choose to speak another language, just let me know. The default is we're doing the TV thing where we establish that you're speaking another language and you speak English for the viewer's sake. So if you need, and some of you speak other languages. I think one of you speaks Chinese. That's like, why I was saying Ni Hao. Ni Hao, yeah. <laughs> yes, the, the professor speaks I, I, Chinese, Russian, in, oh. and very bad accented English. I speak And if they're Sargent, bad guys Chinese, people, and they're German, Kudge. they'll speak with an English accent. Right. So because... two of them have crossbows out. Two of them have spears. They're not, none of that is pointed at you, though. All right. I start to walk over to them. Okay. Well, I think Trix has decided um, that's yeah, where I going like that Trix direction going now. That way. Um, As I'm walking like, that way, yes. I say hello in Kudge, Chinese. We'll go we'll one at a time. So you start with you start with Goblin. Um, 
one of them comes forward. It has uh, the crossbow it's carrying is on a strap and it lets it drop so it's not armed and, and takes the two forearms and holds them to show, look, I'm not armed. It's got six arms. It can't be unarmed. This is it's <laughs> too intense. It would, and could also use a six-handed sword. Yeah. Right. Um, so it did not, not it clearly did not understand the coach. Uh, then I try Chinese. No. Yeah. So try, try that, Russian. it says to you, speak, do, do, do you speak uh, English? Do we? Do we? Uh, yeah, it, that's always a sentence. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I can speak that human language. That is number one. Okay. Excellent. Uh, yes. Hello. Greetings. We we greet you in name of peaceful goblin tribes and not goblin human. This is our exciting new kill. And a good job it is. It is a moosh you killed. Yes? We, we call them spongy meat. New this season. I I see. I'm sensing sensing some advertising here, right? So, <laughs> where um, where do you come from? We we live here. This here. is our home network. Good answer. We're looking for things that have six legs that we can ride. Oh, oh okay, but wait. First, uh, I'm wondering if you have seen my dog. It it's about yay big, and it's about six feet. It, it's about six ns big. It likes scritches. You have Anything? puppy problems. Sort of. Jeez, was that a puppy? <laughs> I, we there was a big big puppy. Be careful! It likes to play day or night. Oh, I know. It's good to know. It's good, very good. We we almost got played with. At least Buck almost became Buck Ball. Why are you in the green? We we are looking. What we I are was looking born this mouth. color. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't he, think he, he means smiles. Um, and asks to for uh, what? What's your title? Doofer. I am Milky Plus. Milky Plus? I am Milky Plus. This is my mate, Shrimplet. Greetings, Milky Plus and Shrimplet. I oh, am okay. Professor Proctor. Ooh, Professor Proctor. I like that. Milky Plus is one of my favorite ancient communication devices. Is okay. You have a very historic name. Oh, oh! I know. My parents were very selective. Excellent, excellent. Also this have uh, a face on a small screen. This hmm. this tall one here with dog problems is Buck. And oh, and I'm Buck. The fierce one. The fierce one. This. I no 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 no. Um, and I'm going to speak this all in Kudge. I'd rather not be introduced at the time. Uh, I think I'm going to hold my um, name back just in case something goes sideways. So I'll just and, sort of nod. And the fierce one here is the fierce one. The fierce one. Excellent. Yes. You would know if you saw what she did to roach rats. I sort of like take some blood out of my eye and fling it because I've got allergies out here in the middle of everything. <laughs> oh, oh, the... the, the um... The shiny bubbles with the pink tails? Yes. Perfect. Yes. How, how can we help you? We're looking for things with six legs that we can ride. I don't, do you know, I mean, I... Our scouts had, had seen them around in this area in the green, had seen things about uh, your size. 
with six legs and thought perhaps we could get them if they're not intelligent, you know, and then ride them and carry things with them would be useful. We have six legs. Those look more like hands to me. Kind of, you to notice. Hands on the end of a leg. It doesn't have to be a foot at the end of the leg. Humans and they're like, ooh, if you don't have feet at the end of your legs. Do you want legs. to come to our settlement? That would be yes. fantastic. You could be guest star. Yay! Uh, hang on one second, Trix. Let's discuss this. Uh, and I'll sort of wave and motion them and I'll get everybody together. All right, so. Just a second. Yeah. And then I run back over. Yeah. And if we're speaking this uh, in our other language. All right. right. So they want to take it. I can understand what they're saying. So they want to take us to yep. their settlement, which isn't a bad thing, um, except a number one. What if this was what our scouts saw to begin with, that now we don't have options about riding things because they're intelligent. And B number two, if we go to their settlement and there's just more of them, what's to say that they don't hurt us and steal all of our shit? A, obvi, this is what they they saw. I mean, come on. It's a horse mule looking thing with six legs. A uh, big red truck. So, yeah. But if we go, we can kind of get an idea of what their culture's like and how advanced or not advanced they are. And then if we can make some type of a trade deal or possibly subjugate them, or, you know, whatever we need to do. <laughs> you know, the, the subjugation thing is interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to not, I'm going to hold back and just, you know, pretend like maybe, I don't understand what they're saying. Uh, what you maybe got, they want jobs. Maybe they just want jobs. We could just say, you know, maybe we're going to deal. Just, they're out here hunting and they just killed a, a, a meat slug. And yeah, I mean... Just saying. I feel like I feel like everyone overlooked very important phrase there. Now I did not get sense of hostility, but I did notice they invited us to be their guest stars. That's unusual turn of phrase, no? All right, I'll give you points for talking. That's all right. I didn't <laughs> hurt you this time, so you make a good point. Uh, I'm still a little concerned about being surrounded by a bunch of people that we don't know. So what's our exit strategy, just in case? I punch them. Shoot our way out. <laughs> Giant well, dog? Okay. Professor, correct me if I'm wrong. Don't, don't let him correct you. You're stronger than that. <laughs> no, he knows about these stupid animals out here that aren't worth wasting brain power on learning All what right. they are. Point taken, continue. This, this slug thing here, is it really, really, really tough? No, no, no. This is mush. Mush is it's it's spineless. It's it's just right. kind of wiggles and it took along. Them like it dies easy. Crossbow bolts to kill the thing. Come on. Oh, so, uh, professor, that's not weird. Partially because it's got a uh, not super nervous system, so it's one of those things where it barely notices pain, and you have to do a lot to get it to stop moving. Decentralized nervous system basically is. Is is pile of guts and, and just every bit of it works by itself. You got to stab it a lot. What would right? happen if I shot it in the head? It doesn't I mean, have a head exactly. It has head does? parts in all the parts. Horns. The head parts are in all the parts. It thinks with its feet and with its butt like its head. Not like dumb. me. <laughs> that makes no sense. Never mind. Right. He doesn't oh. know what he's talking about. No, it's if all right. If they had skill, they would have just shot it in the head and it would have died. I did maybe. What? All right. Look, we, we can go with them. If you want to tell them that we can go with them, that's fine. And we can be their what? guest stars, whatever that is. But I'm just Why saying Why don't we ask them what guest star means? Oh, good idea. Before we I turn and I yell in common them. or English. What does guest star mean? Oh, God, he's so fast. He comes running over, which is a little really weird. disconcerting. God. <laughs> well, he leans forward, right, and then kind of skitters, and yeah. then stands up again. So yeah, yeah. you're totally right. Disconcerting. Uh, guest star. We, our village has our regular cast, and you would visit. You would be a guest star, right? 
Maybe they have some sort of TV culture. Oh. I'm feeling like well, there I is some he's history named after there. Nokia Plus. I I heard of a thing called America's Got Talent, and uh, I oh, think, I'm very familiar with it. That's so I think good. we should. Okay, so I just to that intervene here. Voice. A warning I normally give to improvisers: remember, <laughs> ask if something actually exists before establishing it in the <laughs> setting, because there are things that do and do not exist, and also to know about something like America's Got Talent. There's actually a skill that lets you know oh. about stuff that was literally a hundred years ago. So oh, these people, unless you have a reason to have seen that, you would never have seen that. Uh, well, I would never have seen it. Oh yeah, yeah. legends. But if the Just character legends. has like an interest in those things, uh, we have a the oh, core cast has a character that's interested in like eighties music and has a uh, skill and then it's like collects it and so uh, yeah yeah. But you do know piece of information you do have is probably what Bach is referring to. And there is a thing called Channel 8. Channel 8 is not actually Channel 8. It's Channel Infinity, but it's an 8 on its side, so they tend to call it Channel 8. Uh, it is a, a network run by AI. So what happened was, right before the fall, a bunch of people had bought, a bunch of corporations had done ad buys, and because of the way that works, they were recurring so they eternally had the ad buys even after the world was over. Wow. But the AIs had no idea. So the AIs produce content. Uh, the AIs poorly understand the world. So there's weird shows like Perfect Herman. And there are in certain places still public screens like you get in some cities that just show Channel 8 all the time. So Bach could easily have seen that and have some understanding from watching some of that. But the stuff is like as dumb as all, you know, all my head or because the AI has to create all shows to then put ads in. Yeah, exactly. All my face, yes. So the, the programming is is nuts. Um, yeah, I'm assuming that's kind of what my face on a small screen was, is like a little be, yeah, mini yeah. TV and I can watch so it's Channel not, 8. <laughs> so there's a show called America's Gorp Talent. <laughs> exactly uh, and it's usually like um almost like bad spanglish so it might be what is talent have you and then somebody comes up and does something the ai thinks is a talent and then there's applause and then maybe somebody gets his legs cut off and then there's right, a the laser <laughs> yeah and there's an ad for like a real estate company that's been nowhere for 100 years uh yeah and it Hi. does sound now that you say it, like these creatures are talking like they learned English from that broadcast. Oh. So it's we could be possible. their kings. Well, it's possible they've never met somebody that actually speaks English outside <laughs> of that context, right? So they seem to have limited understanding of like full syntax and things like that. We can uh, teach them of our participles. Which suggests, especially to the professor who studies cultures, that they are an insular culture and probably have not. You may be like some of the first goblins they've actually had proper interactions with. Or they might have seen you, but obviously they don't have a lot of experience in dealing with you. Is this what happens to the Amish in the future? I'm really concerned now. <laughs> They, they become human centipedes, yeah. Yes! It's just... <laughs> I'm very oh, concerned for the Amish. Yes. TV, TV reality show addicted human centipedes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, concerned for Amish. <laughs> Their names are Milky Plus, Shrimplet, Mega Vape, and Pancake, which are three names of products they saw on the broadcast. Nice. Uh, you will pick up pretty quickly. They're all named for things in those ads. So they all have these weird like advertising names. This is wonderful. And are super, super proud of them. What? Grim Call. They should be. What? Just Tell that them name. that will only show up if they make us their superstar guests. I mean, I'm Simple not gonna talk, but if you want sure. to, go ahead. <laughs> superstar guests. Superstar guests. We're a big yes. deal in our culture. Everybody stand up straight. Yes, we're I have super that huge. feeling about this. So oh, we get to be <sighs> guest stars. Super just makes her legs kind of. The possibility of signing on next season. I like the idea of the camera 
just moving up about three mm-hmm. inches. Yeah. And we just hear the legs going. <laughs> <laughs> Super guest stars. Let's oh. do this. Oh, I find something to stand on top of so I can be as tall as everybody else. <laughs> so, I just pick you up. <laughs> you got <to> walk. <laughs> A very special episode. Very special episode. Very special, Super special. episode. He turns over and smiles at Shrimplet. The Shrimplet seems very excited. We should get them back immediately. All right, you will be uh, you will be our special guest. Please come with us. Um, we do you mind if if we spend uh, a commercial break uh, to bind the creature so we can drag it back? Absolutely. Okay, they begin binding the creature. We're going to take commercial break. So let's do that bio break. Uh, we're going to meta take the break when they take the break. And uh, can you run a couple of ads? Anybody watching? Please come back. It'll only be up in five minutes. Um, we're just going to take a moment to step away so we don't explode and uh, do a little uh, slideshow of upcoming stuff. And we will be back presently. And we're back. And that, I think we're a little early this time. So, yay. Uh, all right, so last we left, uh, you were working with, uh, they tell you that they call themselves the Arvus, A-R-V-U-S, Arvus. They are effectively a form of beastie because uh, they're kind of coarse people, sort of. They're obviously pretty pretty seriously mutated, but they're effectively centaurs. Um, they have ropes, they're gonna tie there's four of them. They'll tie around front limbs and drag this, this thing. Uh, it's pretty big, pretty heavy, uh, but it's basically a big sack of meat. Uh, so, so they can drag a lot of weight. And it's leaking because they shot it. So Ooh. it's kind of disgusting. Uh, does that put us in any kind of danger for things following us? I mean, they're literally going to track these fluids back to the camp if we're not doing anything careful. So, uh, your, what's your land law like? Uh, I have a four. Someone's a hunter, right? Who is hunting? Uh, I do have forage meat, actually. I do have hunting forage meat. Yeah, that's it. So hunting lets you without rolling, just gather food. Um, a little like D&D rangers can do. Got so it. Uh, you would probably think to warn them if you wanted to, uh, this could attract predators. Uh, tracking probably isn't as much of a thing, but the fact that there's blood, they seem like hunters though, so you're not sure what the deal is. Like they don't seem concerned about it. Uh, I will poke the professor who seems to be the most proficient at speaking with them and just be like hey hey um so this is a thing maybe you should tell them i don't know maybe they just do this for fun or they lure more things in with the blood but it's just a thought maybe you're not you're, you're muted professor come on <laughs> you can I, do better I than see. this human come on you can I, do this i see i was trying i was trying my mental mutant powers i don't have them yet not yet it's true more radiation all right uh, so yes, the the I, I see what you're saying. The uh, the 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 guts and blood and things uh, entrails not so good on the ground. I will I will mention this to our helpful hosts, and so I will go over to uh, our helpful hosts, Milky Milky Plus. And how can I be of service? We we've noticed uh, a a discontinuity with uh, the harvest here of your squishy uh, uh, spongy uh, meat. He can that, never say uh, anything normal, can he? No, no. You're, no. you're leaving this bits. An incontinence? Uh, yes, in fact. Is, is incontinence <laughs> of the spongy meat is leaving, uh, is leaving behind, you see, and is not oh. good. The weight is not good. Do you have um, diapers? Unsightly stains. Uh, we will be dropping this at a cache we won't drag directly to the settlement. Uninvited guests would come. Indeed, indeed. We would not want to interrupt the show. No, not punky roosters. (laughs) Getting killed, (laughs) he informs you, is bad. Mm. Good to know. 
they drag it, and there is a small group of their, so again, these Arvis creatures, and it's an area that's got a fair amount of blood, because there's a pit, and there's a couple of stones that almost look like uh, they've been dragged over to be sacrifice stones, but you figure out what they're doing is, it's a slaughterhouse area, a little bit away from the settlements, and you've seen settlements that have areas like this for butchering and for leather tanning, where you make sure that you're also largely going to be uh, downwind of where the settlement is. Uh, and they're certainly right. savvy enough have, to have figured that out. Uh, so they obviously do their killing here. And, and they actually have like little wagon things. Uh, and they've actually got some salt they've collected. So they, they start butchering the thing and they're going to wrap it and salt it and put it in a cart. And so uh, Grimclaw, yeah, it looks like they kind of agree with your whole survivalist cottage core thing you got going on. Like they're very much like simpatico. Uh, so this is all kind of the stuff that you advise your settlement to do. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's it's very uh, Norwegian cottage core, but with less of the hardcore black metal in the middle of it. It is, and a lot less of the weird racism. Yeah. And other than that, try to avoid that. You know, the, 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 the shows don't want to go too far into like the goblin black metal because that's super problematic. That yeah, yeah. We I, I understand that. It's part of our culture. We're still trying to explore and we're figuring things out. Um, but exactly. you know, we gotta go to the extreme before we come back to a more authentic you, you place. just have to make them yeah. feel unwelcome and hopefully they'll move along and take yeah. their shit. Yeah. All right, so you guys um <laughs> Mega Vape and Pancake are part of the butchering crew, and they're going to start breaking down uh, the Lamouche. And uh, but Milky Plus and Trimplet are hunter scouts, and then they're going to take you back to the settlement. So they're the two that had the crossbows, and then the two that are doing the butchering are the ones with the spears. They they all have crossbow, spear, and long knives. It's okay. just which weapons they happen to have. Oh. Yeah, totally cramping my aesthetic. That's exactly what I have. Only some they, knife. They're very much armed and armored like hunters. Like they've got light leather so they can move that, that covers what you presume are their vitals. You know, uh, it, it, very similar. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you then go another 10, 20, 30 minutes. And up ahead, you see an area where the trees are larger and wider, taller, big, big trees. Kind of indoor redwood looking uh and what's happened is they have grown very quickly which is what happens in wild zones and then they've grown up through and amongst a, a strip mall and what's happened is big chunks of strip mall have grown up into the trees so it ends up being a uh, strip mall tree house Ooh. with a bunch of rope ladders between it uh, and there is also uh, a series of ladders going down to the ground. So another thing that they seem... So those of you that are more like tactically combat oriented, it's like you obviously, like you had with concerns with the creature and the blood, you're like, what about defenses? And now that you see it, you're like, well, yeah, but you have six arms that can climb. Yeah. So this is probably super defensible for you. And you I can see, that. yeah, the whole town is up in the suspended... Uh, strip mall. Mall Boreal. First time any of you has seen anything like that. Uh, Mil Milky Plus says, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, can you um, up, go, go, uh, climb. Yeah. climb? She, maybe Milky doesn't understand that we're superstars. So we don't I have Please. climb fall does that mean like i can like so cli climb the ones with the slash it's used for both things so it's right. not climb fall it's climb or fall you make right now i got so that if you've got I a was climb just of five dice or higher you can probably pretty reliably climb if you've got under five dice mm -hmm. it's less reliable I would like to say for the record, I think you can climb and fall sufficiently enough for us to take care of all of these things. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, also, you've the, got the cyber legs and the arms. Like, I imagine the repetitive, like, is not a huge problem for you. I've got a four. 
I just want to make it look cool. Professor's not keen so much with the climbing oh. or the falling, wait. but Are especially. You're take us to the director. I say in our language, wait, everyone, hang on. Are we still maybe trying to get these things to like maybe work for us as like carrying things? Because maybe, tiny goblin, you could maybe convince one of them to carry you up on their back. Let's see what their load capacity is. You know what I'm saying? Like, because thing is superstars don't have to climb their own ropes you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying guys uh, come on boy big brain i don't do oh. my own stunts yes we gotta exactly. engage some stunt doubles that's what it is so, this is I, I am be... i normally am not good with the prevarication but i am liking this plan as so much i do not like to climb has anyone got a decent to see bro uh, i just yeah. want to be your agents okay. that's all i'm, I'm good at bartering <laughs> Can anyone beat it too? Oh, wait, I have uh, it too. Oh, under what's it under? Oh, influence. Was, uh, influence. influence. Mm. I, I have I mean, a two, but I have a six to intimidate. Te technically, so. that makes me the best deceiver with a three. Um, but I'm better at persuading than deceiving. I'm I'm very good with persuading. the difference, and let me say this in case we have any um, mega viewers: the difference between persuading and deceiving is. One is you're trying to convince something, and the other one, you're fucking lying. <laughs> they're, they're similar skills, but on a very foundational level, say, for instance, uh, someone attacked an important building in your country. Sometimes you might want to try to convince them you know, of how the best to deal with that, but sometimes you might just lie about the fact that it happened. That would be a deceive check. So it sounds like you're lying about being important, uh, not persuading them. Yes, yeah. yes. I I would rather persuade them that you know delicate human body does not go very well, good against that's the ground. Absolutely fine. If you try to do it without the big lie, you can say that kind of stuff. Like, by the way, we're going to need a little extra help and more guests, and that's well, going to be persuaded. You have. You have a reason because you suck at climbing. So like you can just, you can, I mean, we can, as, as goblins, we can all say that we're, we're really amazing at a lot of things, but you're just awful at it. Right, but if right. you spell it, it, it yeah. if, and we're a big deal, you need to treat us like princes, that's deception. See, I'm not so, selling it like I that. I'm just deal. selling have it like, I, I'm the I'm, smartest person here. Have They're you very seen tiny the deal. egg head here? I like to protect <laughs> this. It's fragile like egg. I don't want that to see it smash on ground. So, okay, we'll work. We'll work this slowly. All right, Professor, why don't you just try the? Let me let me see if I can persuade them. Uh, Mil Milky Plus. Uh, yes, uh, I I really hate to ask this, but uh, you see where I am from. We don't with much of the up and down go. We don't do that. The climbing oh. is not so much the thing. These uh, these over here, they better at it than I am. But you know, I would feel much better if perhaps I could get some assistance with the up down go, and perhaps take the tiny one with me. You're having trouble with the up down. The he climb. Has trouble with the up down. The climb. I, just, I don't. Oh, do. the climbing. Oh, I, I, I like I, four I, of your arms. Just thinking something entirely different. That's. That's a little oh. detail problem. So mm -hmm. we have uh, baskets to carry heavy loads up. We could, but but your your tall friend is a big deal. That would be um, it. Wouldn't be a featured kind of way to go into the town. But we can well, have baskets going. I, I figured that being guest stars and featured for this episode being carried up by one of you would be amazing. Uh, our, I'm not selling on that one. <laughs> our, our legs don't <laughs> do that. And he kind of demonstrates that the way they're, because almost the back legs are almost like horse legs. Like they have no, carry someone like that and climb. They have, he tries to put out a leg that way oh, and they don't they? really Okay, like so I, I'm visualizing a little better now. So they're literally horse legs for the other four with just hands instead of feet. 
they're between horse and human. They're they're hinged weirdly. Like right. looking at the move is really strange. Uh, and he says we can we can send down our very best baskets. I can climb. He can climb. If he falls, it's okay. He's climb. just a human. Well, wait, wait, wait. All right. So I'm going to gather everybody together. All right. Okay. All right. So if we're going to climb Fred just now, keeps wanting to climb up and is like starting to go, then everybody's like, wait, wait, wait. And wait, wait, like, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching. Oh, no. like, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. So if we're going to do this, just, now we got to do it impressively because we couldn't convince them to do anything else. So let's do it really. Let's let's make some cinematic actions yeah. happening right now. Okay. Let's, let's make so, this badass. All right. Mike, yeah. I do some quick mental math. Knowing how Tufer's built and how our springs are and everything and how high up it is, yeah. do I think with the proper boost or something that Tufer might be able to just jump up there and not even have to climb? Oh, so wait, I've got, yeah, I've got a fun jump thing. I can leap. Oh, never mind. definitely do. So in my mind, I think your imagination works like somebody uh, scrolling little diagrams. And so we see a diagram of like a sketch of a tree and a sketch of a little cyborg goblin. And you do the math and the and, line. Yeah. And, and it, I'm drawing it out on the ground real quick. I'm like, hold on to her. And I'm just tracing it out in the dirt. The arc goes up and then you actually take the time to draw the blood splat. Like, Obviously. No, like they can make it in a couple of jumps, but it's pretty again. Think Redwood, it's not okay, you know, a straight up jump like they can jump double normal, you know, height, but that's like 12 18 feet. Gotcha. Not and this is like I can still scramble the last the rest of the way. But you're and you're talking, she's already talking cinematic action, so yeah, yeah. talking like I want a Naruto jump up and go boingy boingy boingy, oh. look cool. Absolutely possible. What, what if, what if, what if Bach like uh, uh, cannonball special to her and just like flung her, and as he's flinging her, she jumps from there. Here's what we're gonna do. We get <laughs> Professor to go up in the basket, right? Because he looks totally different from us. Yes. So he goes up first, announces our amazing arrival. Then, as we're like climbing up the ropes, that's when I chuck Tufer up there, who does the cartwheel landing, boom. And then when they're like, whoa, <laughs> and then the rest of us, boom, we're in, cha. And then, you know, if we had extra ammo, I would totally guns up, but maybe that's a bad idea. Don't waste the ammo <laughs> on that. But I like no. that plan. That's a good one, Bob. Well, my gun doesn't we'll like just do ammo. So we'll just do finger guns. <laughs> just gonna do finger guns. The professor is fine going up in a basket. Yes. That's easily done, done and done. They lower a thing that's a little bigger than a hamper that they put things they don't want to. And you can see it's because they would have trouble carrying loads. They're just not built that way. So generally, if that's not something they're going to carry on the body, like they've got kind of cross-body messenger bag, like hobo bag kind of things. If it's bigger than that, they would throw out one of these and they'd, they'd <laughs> hoist it up. So you can climb into the hamper and they lift the professor all the way up. Yeah. All right. Wow, Ma wow, right. As he goes up, I'm like, happen. make sure you talk us up when we get the talk us up. So. My God, Bach, it's like you're a performer in real life or something. <laughs> while, while we're waiting on all that to happen, I'm just caressing my electric gun. <laughs> oh, that's true. You get a charge out of the capacitors anyway. So, yeah. We got. We should probably start heading up, okay, right? Okay, so now the, right. the yeah. various green skin folk, although I'm going to leave this, uh, I imagine opinions this would vary. Grimclaw, would you consider green skin a slur or like a, a phrase you'd use? Um, I feel like it's something that people with green skin can use with each other, but it's not our, something that anyone word. outside. Yeah, it's our word. Our word, we can, we can be green skin slang together, but not nobody right. else can talk about it. Right. So God help the professor if he slips and uses it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, will even call if him it, out. Even if it's part of a song, he has to just mouth, not even mouth that word. Yes, he has to absolutely. Just skip that word. Okay. So part of a song with the lyric green skin. <laughs> All right. So tricks. 
you're the only person that I see having difficulty with this whole ascend dramatically plan. Uh, how do you plan to ascend dramatically? The others can do various jumping and pitching and throwing and climbing and power stunts. I mean, I'm not terrible at it. Right. If you're willing to just climb, I'll be making a climb roll. Right. Oh, uh, hey, Trix, I bet you could do one of those things where, like, Robin Hood style, where you could just, like, cut the uh, a, a rope and then maybe ascend with the basket, like, super, super fast, just whoop, like, real quick. Please, I think please don't cut the rope on the basket. <laughs> 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 Oops. Uh, is Trix tiny enough that I can carry him? Because I do have a, I do have a five or six in climb here. I think yeah. I have a, yeah. yeah so and then you've got, you've got more mass. You absolutely could. All right. So mm. I'll just okay. just carry him. But I said, oh. but Trix, you have to make this impressive. Like oh, you have to. Oh. When I get up there, you're gonna like leap you. off of my shoulders no, 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 or no. something. I've got you. All right. So I I trust I you. I have I have my lightning gun. Oh Jesus. And Shoot it in the trees, really? <laughs> we're using finger guns. We're saying we're using finger guns, people. Finger guns. Come oh, no, on. No, 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 no. So I find something small <laughs> on the ground, like a rock or a small pine cone or something. And I say small, like the size of my head. And I so, have that in one arm and lightning gun in the other. So you know how <laughs> perspective is everything? Yes. So in my mind, we've just spent an hour and a half talking about <laughs> going up the stairs. And the other thing that maybe we've missed as, as players is these creatures climb agilely, naturally. So maybe the only thing that won't impress them is climbing. So I'm picturing a lot of, so picture them having a conversation in the background. The party is like, jumping and doing power stunts and shooting acorns <laughs> and and they're just kind of like do you think they're gonna i i don't know they were talking for a while i think it was about climbing the ladder uh, the the bold one is up like and then finally everyone oh ha ha does like a whole chinese acrobats kind of like a thing and ends up like ha with one person hanging off a box and super having one like done three consecutive like air jumps and milk I feel like we, we all like do that whole like and everybody lands in like a, a pose and like yep, we're yes. looking around like for it's really for the finish a, that's really yeah like applause right and yet everybody's just looking at us dumbfounded but Tufer <laughs> doesn't get that it's the wrong kind of dumbfounded right so right. is like ah well, they're, they're also particularly trained for this so there's a pause of nothing and then they're like, oh, it's the gong show. And they, they all kind of start applauding. This is where you applaud. Because they especially since that out. I have yeah. the feeling like I announced them a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> 40 minutes ago. Yeah, he, yeah, the professor walks over. He's got a sandwich. Like, he's rusted. Um, it, did you talk us up? I told you to talk us up. Oh my God! I gave you an introduction that was three and a half minutes long. Milky Plus right. says to the professor, uh, <laughs> "No, actually, Bach. I think Bach asked this. Uh, you wanted to see the director. Oh, that was me. I was like, okay, you get to so meet the director. Did, did, yeah. You want to see the director? Yeah. He's he's busy, but we can see if he has time on his schedule. Oh yeah, whenever we can be penciled in or." The executive producer would probably be fine too. And Shrimplet takes you around, and they have an area that was actually like an old, kind of a 7 Eleven that's yeah. partially still intact, in but the they're trees? using in the trees. Yeah. And part wow. of it has kind of a lunch counter, and that's the equivalent of like a tavern for them. And they've got uh, a lot of. Um, <laughs> Jesus, how we eat in Austin. It's artisanal, locally sourced bullshit in salad bowls. You and should I'm try the like, squirrel snake salad. It's very delicious. Those of us that live in or near Austin, sadly, this is like our uh, arugula, cholula. Like, it's a lot of that. Oh, Avocado and everything. That, that we got earlier. Chorizo. 
about that meat that we got earlier. Is there any of that around? Uh, yeah, the, it's, the it's mush. Up my up character, my character oh. sheet specifically says that I can eat an edible thing such as kale. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely, can. you have iron. You have iron gut, right? So, yeah, so yeah. it's just not particularly good. I mean, it's just that. Uh... If you have the okay. right palate, it's amazing. I, I'm just gonna yeah, take yeah, a I few mean, bites and say, "Ow, my face." <laughs> Just that, yeah, just that so counts as just, your counter, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loki plus comes Alma back <laughs> and says, "Good news, when there is time in his schedule. I can take you to go see Cock Rocket Deluxe." I'm, I'm sorry, what? was his name? Cock, Cock, Rocket. <laughs> Cock Rocket Deluxe. Cock Rocket Deluxe. Okay. Sounds very important. And. He has, he leads you to the the and there are areas where um, they're actually residential, and you can see they've got packages that are their names attached to where their houses are. So you pass Megavape's house, and there is an ad for Megavape, which serves as his address. Uh, and then you go all the way up, uh, you pass Cockrock at Deluxe's residence. And it's apparently a brand of condoms. And there's a package of those on his door, which he apparently was named for. Uh, and they take you up to the largest of the buildings, which is what's left of a bank. Let me guess, he's hung like a horse? How many times? Oh. Now I'm actually curious. Like if there are females of this species, do they have multiple breasts? Because now I'm really concerned. They, they have an upper and a lower register, yes. You say concerned. I, I mean, say. <laughs> intrigued? Fascinated? Intrigued. All of those Maybe things. a part of the problem <laughs> biology it's I do not want to study. Also playing to the Austin contingent, they can form a polycule with only two of them. Wow. <laughs> That's how much is going on. <laughs> Uh, and they, oh, they take you in, and there's obviously people that are not quite servitive, but they're people working with the boss. And it's again, this is um, the equivalent of a small, like almost like uh, medieval town. I mean, so they're concerned with things like securing the village, food, but there's that weird gloss. Oh, one thing I, I should have mentioned uh, you did pass in the center of town, so the largest tree has got several of the big Channel 8 screens. So it's exactly what Bach was thinking. Uh, and they are all day long. I think, um, what's the, uh, they live. So remember they live, they would intentionally put up those areas to broadcast the message. Mm -hmm. That was kind of true right before the fall. And that's a setup like this. And the reason was the advertisers are so powerful. They wanted to make sure that even if you didn't have, you didn't have access. You could still <laughs> get at influence. Him. Yeah, in a very kind of Tokyo way. Uh, and that is in the middle of town. And there are clusters of these creatures just watching. And you can tell they're practicing English by repeating things they're seeing on the screen. And then so, they'll, they'll use catchphrases to one another, uh, which is either cute or terrifying, depending how you feel about people talking in commercials and like Kardashians. Because that's kind of what's going on. Uh, and there is an older fella who's got a, a white mane uh, and he's not wearing armor. He has clothes. So the front part comes down almost like tails uh, and not tails like a tail, like tails like a tail jacket. Right. Um, so he's kind of distinguished looking for one of these. Uh, and he says, uh, welcome guests. I am Cock Rocket Deluxe, and I am very pleased to meet you. Darmak and Jalad on the ocean. <laughs> Excellent. Pleased to meet you. I am Professor Proctor, and these esteemed guests, the superstars that we have brought you all the way from the far off village of Narak. They are lean. They are mean. They are nothing like me at all. 
They are goblins. Well, except for Buck, he's troll, but it's close enough. So, Pancake, who had been behind before, enters. So, obviously, she was lagged behind and caught up. And she's actually got a role playing game book. Uh, these have appeared in the campaign before. One of the mages, his magic power is partially based off of, he has a player's handbook and casts spells partially using it. Oh, do you recognize it? And there, uh, no, this would be, uh, well, you recognize what it, what it is. Like, okay. so it would not be a weird book to you. It would be, that's a game book. Okay. I think you'd recognize that. And he holds up a drawing of a fantasy goblin. And this is certainly part of where you got your name because it was a cultural thing you're playing into. But probably none of you have literally seen, like he's basically holding up Pathfinder 5th edition and he, he holds up the thing that kind of matches you. And I think would point at Grimclaw and, and says, uh, Goblin? Uh, well, yeah. interesting question. I mean, and, and, I'm, and I'm still like speaking in courage, like, well, all right. So there's a bit of an opinion about that <laughs> regarding whether or not we're actually Goblins or not. Uh, but I think like we, yeah, I, I feel like we accept the culture and, and that's we're, we're embracing it. And then I kind of turn to the professor and I'll just say, just, just tell them yes. She says yes. So you speak a language that was invented by the goblins to sound like goblin language as answer to are you a goblin? So he seems thrilled because even though he doesn't understand the words, you're like, hey, are there horses? you know, it, you clearly goblin at him. And he's all excited <laughs> and it puts the book away and says, uh, happy that you are on Sam. On Sam. On sale. On sale. All right. Is compliment, uh, I think. Super, who has been completely lost by all like the commercial <laughs> battle, suddenly clues in and is like, Super, one special. <laughs> ah. two, two for one special. Two for one is two for, two for one. special. <laughs> and they seem very excited. It's clearly the, the best or worst case of thinking you're communicating and really not communicating. So everybody's super excited about nothing because they've been communicate nothing. <laughs> um, Cock Rocket asks uh, Bach, um, why uh, have you tuned in? Mm. Uh, Grimclaw. Producer, hmm. Uh, um, I, I say, I say, in Goblin, but Grimclaw yeah. doesn't want their name said. No, oh, that's right. <laughs> this is why you're a troll and not actually entirely a goblin because you miss out on important cues. About it like my that. name is Bach because that's the sound that my my bat makes when I hit people. It's not because of <laughs> anything else. <laughs> I got two skills here, people. I got two skills. <laughs> so he, he seems very excited and says, oh, like Bok Bok time. Yes. Super deluxe Bok Bok time. Excellent. <laughs> yes. How can... Super even. Bok Rocket. Yeah. So why, why, you, why <laughs> are you here? Uh, okay, my, short my, my, version. My, our like, scouts my... saw some things with six legs that we thought we would be able to ride and use as pack mules. Turns out it's probably you guys. We don't intend to use you as pack mules, but we wanted to come and say hi since obviously we didn't know you were here. Tricks being the truthful one. That's impressive. We heard there was a sale. Are the others <laughs> your friends? Which others do you refer to? Have you seen others like them? Like you. Like me. Oh, but with, yeah. With more, um, with more weapons, like, and points to tricks. Oh. No. Humans not our friends. This one, eh. And he this one guest, This one guest star from Crossover. 
one of the Arvis comes over and has uh, some drawings, and mm -hmm. one is of a skull in a ring of barbed wire, and the skull has kind of, uh, the eye holes are kind of like flame shaped. It's very much what a 15 year old would draw on their folder when they're bored in detention. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the emblem of curse. It was oh. the local warlord that's been threatening the area. Not friends. It, they have, is this, this your logo? Not friends. No. No. Um, villain that of would the be show. That would be the competing oh. channel. Villain oh. of the show. We, we stayed away. Antagonist. They hmm. seemed... Um, Villains. Dangerous. Right, right. And they are. Yes. They've been moving through the green um, the last two, three days. Lots of them. Uh -oh. Do you know why? No. Uh, I was going to ask you. Okay, sit, sit, sitting down for a moment. Professor Proctor uh, takes out a sketchbook and papers and, and quickly draws a region of green uh, and says, uh, without identifying direction of Narak, uh, is saying, okay, we here, this is approximate where your, your, your mall burritum is here. Which direction the curse come from and which direction to curse to go to? He uh, waves over uh, one of the others that's standing in the room. Uh, it's another one of the Arvis named Stainaway. Uh, Stainaway comes over. He's dressed kind of like a scout, so has like kind of ranger gear looking stuff. Looks at your map and uh, points and draws with their finger that they're going this way through here to come around. It looks to you like it's a small army uh, being positioned to flank and advance on Merrick coming out of the green. Oh, balls. Uh, how many of your hands would you say there were? What were the hard, ratings? Hard to tell. It's been more than one day, more than one group. So they're not moving in one bulk group. They're moving in small units. 30 or 40 altogether. Oh. 30 or 40 groups. And, and armed, not with crossbows, but with uh, old weapons. Guns. More like, like his. Oh, A so. shotgun. Like, uh, I, uh, oh, oh, guns, 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 guns. Yeah, guns. Guns, guns, guns. That's not good. On sale now. A, lo a lot of guns. Oh boy! Oh. Special on guns, like Texas. Ah. <laughs> how many? How many in each group? Uh, between, like, kind of like you, um, small four, units, four and eight small, uh, and the. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got a lot of names here. Um, Stainaway says. Um, they seemed to be um, uh, uh, move sneaking. Mm. So small groups uh, moving uh, quiet. That's uh, why uh, I always change the channel. I, I they they had they had guns. Uh, they had guns, 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 and they were being secretive. So. You said villains, right? Yeah. So we kept away. Uh, like they're all show. going. They look to be leaving the green. So no worries. Oh, no. This is not good. What he said. Yeah. Lordy. Oh, my uh, face. What, by the way, one of the Arvis responds in Chinese. Ooh. Apparently, there's like alternate, you know, like you, you can do the uh, the voiceover, like you can subtitles. Like, yeah, and one of them watches Chinese. Zap. So that was that was then then he understood uh, very badly accented, uh, <laughs> humping son of a bitch. 
<laughs> and I, I just said, yeah. All right. I'll gather, I guess I'll gather everybody back together again and be like, one, one second. All right. Come here. Uh, all right. Small commercial break. So that's our people. We have to go protect them or do something. Or, and hear me out. Hmm. If we could get message to them that it's coming, but we could intercept these groups and take out groups before they can get there. We know they're coming. They don't know we're coming. We can ambush them and like leapfrog forward. Yeah, I, but there's I, only I five feel, of us. I, I feel and like I, like six and, or seven of them. and we're there's, goblins, which means we're better. There's six or seven in each group of which there are 30 or 40 groups. Now, I've not, not yet perfected any sort of cloning technology which would enable us to do this. Perhaps you could do this, Trix. Invent some way to clone all of your goblin friends. Then you would have army big enough to take them out. But until then, I feel this is a lost cause. A, nothing's a lost cause. You just haven't done the math right if you think it is. B, the five of the four of us plus you could easily take out a group of seven or eight humans. And we just have to do no that offense. over and over and over. Dante. We don't have to fight 30 groups at the same time. We just have to fight them one at a time. All right, Trix, I like 35% of this plan. Uh, <laughs> and since you can't count above three, that's close to 100. <laughs> exactly. So here's my thought, Trix. I like the snagging one of these squads maybe taking their uniforms if they have them or dressing up like them, stealing their emblems, going behind them and then wrecking their day over here so that maybe then they have to turn around. At least we can delay them for a little while without trying to kill every single one of them, which I'm pretty sure after we kill a few of them, they're gonna get wise to the fact that there's a few of us running around and then they're gonna team up. I'm that's just saying. What, that's what, what I'm saying, right? if right. we come from the back, like, Okay, so if we kill this group in the front and then another group comes and we kill them, yeah, they're going to catch on that they're not meeting up with their friends. Yeah. But if we come from the back and take them out from behind, they don't realize other people aren't getting there because we're keeping up with them. So let, let me make a Marvel Comics editor note that they've said that was two or three days ago. So you need to come behind to the point where they may have left the green entirely right. already. And if it is an army, they were moving carefully through the green. They may have massed on the other side of the wild zone. Right. All right. So here's my take on it. Since we're surrounded by a bunch of people who potentially might find us to be very important persons or goblins, depending. Uh, entities. Maybe, entities, creatures, things. Maybe <laughs> we could convince all of them since a lot of them are hunters and uh, very capable, at least killing smoosh, uh, that maybe we could convince them uh, to come and aid us uh, as they are um, invading their sovereign territory. I am an amazing negotiator. Are You're you gonna really? have to tell them that they're moving yeah. in on their uh, uh, on part of their uh, their share of the audience. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I like this plan. So yeah, let, let. let's let's see if we can convince them to help us out, and then we can show up like Gandalf at the end of Lord of the Rings and come in on the side with all of the horses and like Philadelphia in the end of the election, and it'll be fabulous. It'll be great. So I'm going to do us the small favor as players, not characters. The following negotiation will be done in English, and we will read in all of the the Darmok, uh, nonsense which is maybe funny and charming, but in terms of moving the plot forward would make this interaction 15 minutes and a lot of rolls. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Trix, you roll up on uh, Condom Man, and uh, what is your pitch? Condom Man. Um, <laughs> from what I've seen walking through the village, what is the most valuable things to them? They do not seem to have economy. Okay, so then it would be food supplies, the things that would suffice in a communist society, such as food supplies, food extra supplies, ropes to redo their buildings. Security, 
Yeah. Okay. So then my offer to him is going to be along the lines of that, that I am well, assuming. You, you still got to have the conversation. Just I, I understand. To, but first, yeah. I want to clarify with you that to make sure that I'm not just making stuff up in my head. I'm assuming from our village, we also do hunting, but we also have crops and we have you things do. that they're not going to have here that is a more sustainable thing for us to con consistently provide. So you don't have a strong enough economy to have export. So you're self-sufficient, but you're not gonna have anything that you can katan away to regularly trade with them. Okay. How, Unless, how, what is the size of Narek compared to this village we're in right now? They're a little small. They're small or we're small? They're small. They're small. Um, so I can offer better weapons because I can just make those. Um, upgrades on like their crossbows and possibly make them some uh, mounted guns for defense here in the village. Um, and... The, uh, we could teach them how to set up some fields here. So are to you grow some talking to anyone or asking these questions aloud? I'm asking them in like, my head to make sure that. Yeah, we, we're going to need, need to have you interact though, because we're okay. on a stream. So, okay. You got to externalize some of that, my friend. Okay. So here's what we're thinking. You guys can move really quickly and we need to get they are heading towards our village, most likely to attack. It's terrible. We would like to propose a crossover where you help us and then we can help you in return. Um, things that, I, can, so things I, I to, can do to help you right. would be I can install um, guns to help defend your village at different points that are strategic. So, so you, don't, be... you don't need to make an insight roll, but it's pretty clear that he doesn't like guns. Okay. Um, I Large crossbows, ballistas, siege weapons to protect the village. Well, the we same weapons that the hunters the village. Use. Um, And we can teach you how to grow crops so that you would have additional food supplies. Oh, no need. Stored. No need. The, the wild is um, abundant. Uh, the things grow here very, very quickly, and anything that we need uh, in excess of that, we hunt, and we've never failed to bring back what we need in less than a day. Okay. Also, wow. and you probably have to explain farming him a little bit. Uh, he points out to you they don't have the kind of land that would support farming, because again, think like Endor, like okay. there's no place to put a farm. It's all big trees. Yeah, well, and like, so hunting, gathering, hunting, gathering, as opposed to farming. And they're, they're clearly, their cup runneth over when it comes to hunting, gathering. And that seems to be just a feature of the wild. All right, hmm. so what do you want? What would, what would, other than our friendship, what could we offer you to help us against these evil bad guys that are trying to destroy our home. Unless they were a threat to the green, um, we could offer refuge to the five of you, but we don't wish to overextend ourselves. Um, I, I think now is the time where I actually sort of step forward and try to speak in English for a second. So, okay. All right. Greetings, Cock Rocket Deluxe. I am Grimclaw. I have kept my mouth silent until now. I want to tell you that if my people, the goblins, are defeated, that will probably be a short matter of time until these creatures come and invade your lands as well. As they are a warring tribe, they're only using your land currently as a way to maneuver towards us and then, much like the hobbits, 
they will come back and attack the Shire as well. This is your opportunity to band together in a uh, concerted effort to stop, I don't know, to stop the raptors from entering the visitor center. He looks concerned. Uh, I don't know if I know this in terms of like background or lore, but obviously these guys are kind of the overarching bad guys. Do I have a proof to say that they've done this before? That this is something that they've attacked before? Sadly, no. You have a lot of rumors. I mean, you have rumors. Um, so a little bit of like setting going. Usually a warlord spring up from time to time because post-apocalypse it happens. Uh, the reason they don't get big is because when they get too big or threatening, the big bad in the setting are the angels. So the angels are actually aliens, and the angels are uh, controlling a lot of what they call them cathedrals. So right. The, right now there's a group in Dallas, and they're literally the faithful that want to go to heaven are working as slaves to put plastic into rocket ships to blast them off uh, because the aliens need plastic. Uh, so more normally what happens is warlords like the angels probably aren't watching anymore. Let's let's make it let's make it grab for power. But they are watching and they, they can call down skyfire, which is like orbital weaponry. Right. So typically a guy gets all bigged up, gains territory, and then skadoosh and like are burned into glass. For some reason, that's not happening to curse. So there's been a lot of, and it's all scuttlebutt because you don't have enough communication over a large enough distance to confirm some of this. But people are very curious why the hell he's making a grab over a big chunk of Southern Texan, uh, down around Dallas, Houston, Austin, and then uh, down um, west from there. Uh, and he's got a chunk of it. And so normally this would have all gone uh, boots up for him a long time ago. And but there's something going on. Hmm. Oh, um, right. he's, he's a fallen angel. Maybe, I don't know. Tufa, you got something you want to say? Um, I was going to say that, I mean, like we're all afeard of, <laughs> is that the sky fire will come if we don't, if we don't stop him. And it seems like he's on the move to grab more land and um, like our town, your town, it won't exist at all if the sky fire comes. And, you know, I don't know much about farming and not farming. I was, you know, I like punching, <laughs> but um, can't punch nothing if there's nothing there. And I assume you can't farm nothing. Farm is not there. I need to. And I'm sure this makes sense in my head. Persuade with a bonus die from Tufa. Get it, Tufa. Nice, it's done. I'm, I'm so eloquent. <laughs> you oh, are eloquent for you, yeah. and that is perfectly fine for goblins. <laughs> passionate. Sometimes passionate heart, heart pulp does the job sometimes. That's right. You might have multiple yeah. hearts. We don't know what our physiognomy is. So, what's your I own? Do. I'm uh, six and four. Okay. So you realize from the look on his face, he has no idea what Skyfire is. So because you piece some of this together and you've done some talking, you assume with some was off screen, um, it probably would occur to you. One thing that doesn't come up on Channel 8 is current news. So it's all recycled, like feed in Nickelodeon, feed in like CBS must see, like it's not based on now. So the right. idea, he has no idea what the hell that is. I, I just um I just sort of look at Trex and 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 I'm like like what what's the word? It's Russians. That's what you're looking for is Russians. So there's Russians in every single place, in every single broadcast that you've probably seen at this point. And there's only a matter of time before, sorry, Professor, the Russians start to show up pretty much <laughs> everywhere. And oh, that's what we're trying to professor prevent. Professor, like, looking invisible. Like, <laughs> never mind me. I'm having, <laughs> I'm having seeds. It's fine. 
Um, um, but yeah, I, so I'm the Russian like, scientist that does the good in in <laughs> the, the, Oh, have so, you have you seen the crossover? The Hitler Channel. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> so Hitler was nice, and everybody said he's not coming for our country, so it's okay. And then he took a country, and everybody was like, "But he's not coming for our country." Then he took another country. He, so that's what Hitler, this guy's doing. Hitler tried to start a revolution. He tried to take over the government, and he failed. But that turned out to be a rehearsal. Then he came back, and then he was Hitler. That yes. sounds like a lesson of history we should never forget. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. seems very fucking important. Yes. Oh, oh, so you're saying curse is Hitler? In a broad Which sense, wins. yes. <laughs> kind of make us I have not seen his painting he, he is the sequel. <laughs> he, is, he is Hitler is season the three. Yes. Look, look, so here's the thing. That makes our town France, and your town gets to be Poland, which BT dubs, you don't want that. So, <laughs> so when you say Poland in context of the Hitler channel, a bunch of the Arvis are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about Bach. Bach, 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 all day long. Poland. Yeah. Poland. That's what we're so... You guys are Poland. If we don't get involved, we're America. Because we get involved really late. We yes. just let it start happening. Right, right, right. exactly. But, I feel like this is a bad analogy. But <laughs> the problem is... The Russian side just leading back like... <laughs> there is no idea what anybody is actually talking about and is just like nothing. So in my mind, too, <laughs> Trooper... In my mind, when you get anxious or impatient, uh, the the flywheels and capacitors in your limbs like wind up, wind down. So you're probably making like whirring noises. I go stand next to Cooper. But it's all oh, like yeah. off kilter too. So I have like one leg that gets a little longer. <laughs> like, oh, that's true. Okay, so share with the class uh, tricks. One of Trix's mutations is that Trix has a positive sensorial relation with electrical fields. So as Tupper winds up, okay. Trix is like, okay, sits a little closer each time. <laughs> Tupper right, well, and Trix decided... are hooking up for the fan fiction. It'll be great. <laughs> All right, so the Arvis decide they don't want to be American. It sounds yeah. like they being in the U.S. is probably a terrible decision. Uh, Try being British, an Irish nation. It'll be great. <laughs> so we we want. You're saying we should help France before yes. things get worse, and there's a higher chance of Poland. Right. We won't be able to help you if we're already gone. And we will definitely help you because we like to bonk things. For the right reasons. Especially curses. Especially don't... Hitler. So Milky Plus says, we don't fight guns, guns, guns. Uh, our armor is uh, for um, uh, tears and knives. And How helpful would we be? Um, well, I will say that you're really good at hunting, especially since I saw what you were doing to the... Uh, them smoosh so i feel like maybe if you just treat all of the hitlers as um prey and sneak up on them real quiet like and then shoot them with whatever you got uh i think that you might be surprisingly effective i mean professor you're a human why don't you tell them how easy it is to kill you <laughs> Well, there, there is a reason why I, I went up in basket. I mean, fragile head, you know, breaks easy when hits ground. But but I, I feel like the essentials here are correct. You you have overwhelming force. You have a you have an army that shows no no desire for peace. 
and you have a small village of, of relatively easily conquered individuals because they're overwhelmed so much. They fight viciously, fiercely, individually. But so many more of the curse with the fire and the guns with the bang, it's not good. But with your help, I feel like this would be more like America, but if America had entered the war sooner, then so ah! many lives could have been saved. Shrimplet says you, you would need more help. Uh, our village is uh, smaller than the number of Hitlers we saw. And not all of us fight. So we have maybe 18 to 20 who could fight, maybe? Are there no studios of your people? We are all that are here that we know of. Do you have any other friends? Haven't needed them. They are insulated. This, they, they do not get out much. Yes, could we, could we let loose the dogs of war? That's the whole thing in Henry V, isn't it? War puppies. I mean, it <laughs> sounds like It'd be great if we had weeks and tricks could train it. It sounds like in the next episode, you will have to seek another ally to have enough forces to be able to drive Curse away. And you'll have the gun to your head because you don't have a lot of time. But that sounds like a worthy uh, challenge to try to undertake in a single session. So uh, let's call it here a little early, but I think this is where we need to be plot-wise. Um, with realizing what the threat is. And uh, next week, which will actually be uh, for the audience, this show runs the first and third weeks of each month. So this group will meet again first week of next month because this is the third, right? Um, June so 7th. Let me... Um, thanks so much to everybody. Um, we're going to go around and... Uh, uh, Melissa, do you have anything to, to uh, promote? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, my name is Melissa L.E. Baker. Um, I'm a performer with Chase Treasure, and I work with the New Jersey Renaissance Fair, among other things. But the one big thing that I really like to talk about is my... Um, we have a Patreon called The Quill and the Quote, where I write spooky stories, and then my husband, who is a professional voiceover narrator, narrates them. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can check us out on patreon.com backslash quill and quote. Uh, or you can find my book on Amazon. It's by Melissa Lee. That's my pen name, L-E-I-G-H, and it's called Dare. So check us out online. Excellent. Um, Snigger, do you have anything... Uh, other than uh, next week at uh, Sherwood? Well, yes. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Snicker, for those of you who don't recognize me without my hair. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, there's, uh, there's normally a glorious amount of it. Yes, I was. I really was trying hard for the for the Mike Nistel gloriness. Nice little gloriness here. It's true. Um, no, yeah. So, so uh, Tanya, um, do we want to talk about Sherwood uh, and then maybe also Rescue? Uh, um, I mean, you can take that. All right. Um, so a goodly percentage of us, which is everybody but Melissa, uh, are all performing uh, at Sherwood Fort. Well, actually, Bach uh, Paolo has moved away from us temporarily. He'll be back next year. Um, but uh, we are performing at Sherwood Forest Fair, which is a renaissance festival that normally takes place much earlier in the spring. But due to many things, we have bumped it. Uh, and we are winding up our season with next weekend being the final one. So if you are in the Austin or Austin adjacent areas, please feel free to join us next weekend, Saturday and Sunday uh, between uh, page, around Page, Texas, uh, between McDade and Giddings, uh, uh, just outside of Austin, for those of you who only have the big map of Texas. Uh, and if you're looking at the map of Nuked, no, we're nowhere on there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really thought you'd actually put us on there. I, I, I did, and I was like looking. It's at a great there. place, currently unoccupied by curse. That's why. <laughs> <There's one. laughs> we're the same zone. There is, a ref, there is a reference to the fair, and it relates to the, the core cast. Uh, okay. They live in a place called the Shire, which is a Bucky Beavers Rest Center that was taken over and populated with by the descendants of Run Fair performers. And I have hinted that they were from Sherwood. A show uh, yeah. so, because I know it had to have been him and his descendants who made that happen. That is so cool. true. 
Uh, okay, so uh, Uriel. Um, I will be also out at Sherwood. I'm one of the people that's out there. And I also have a Patreon that I'm finishing getting all squared away. So next time I will <laughs> plug that and let everybody know what's going on. But I will be teaching many, many things on there, uh, such as card magic, coin magic, um, being a better dungeon master and learning how to tell stories better, uh, using improv to overcome being and introverted parties and things like that. If you just want to get out there and socialize a little better and everything is chess strategy um, lessons and a bunch of other things along those lines. Um, and that'll be up and running by the next. Inspirational creative miscellany. Excellent. Yes. And uh, Tanya. Hey, it's me, Tanya. Um, okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> um, uh, I guess the first thing I'm uh, going to pimp is my business, uh, Tabletop Tees. I do uh, unique, original, hand-blended, loose-leaf tea blends, and you can find those at tabletoptees.com. They are all inspired by a variety of geeky things, largely tabletop, mm, hence the name. Uh, just launched a collaborative project uh, with, for those who watched uh, Tales Told in the Dark, with Mike, you might remember Dave, uh, one of my co-stars from that. We just launched a new pro uh, project called Corpse Coffee, <laughs> which is a web comic and you can actually buy coffee and tea. So corpsecoffee.com will get you there and it's awesome. Um, I'll save my, my other plugs for the next go around and just do those two. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, uh, Paulo, you got nothing back. I got nothing. I got so many things. <laughs> you, you don't do <laughs> I just, hey, I just started wearing pants just a little while ago. I mean, it's been a whole year. You know, you, I'm not wearing pants right now. You don't know. You don't know. <laughs> pants are the worst. Man. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm wearing story, cybernetic you legs. <laughs> you are. I love she it. Is, I fact, she true. really was. Well, that's my knee. I was like, no. <laughs> Good enough. Well, uh, you can find me. Uh, my other name is Paula Garbanzo. Uh, you can find me at a lot of Renaissance festivals. I was just at Sherwood a little while ago, but now Yay. I'm at the Tennessee Renaissance Festival uh, for two more weekends. Uh, so it's in the middle. It's just south of Nashville. So if you're anywhere in that area, uh, come on out and check it out. It's a ton of fun. And uh, I also want to thank all of our Nat 21 people who were here tonight on the stream, which I saw. Uh, so thanks for being here and supporting this show. And uh, our, we've got games on Nat 21 Adventures, uh, which is on Twitch. We have shows from Sunday to Thursday uh, where Melissa runs a game and uh, I run the game on Tuesday nights, our main Dungeons and Dragons game. I know you guys are running a game on Tuesday night too, but uh, you can check them both out. Uh, we have, uh, we have all sorts of things. It's all recorded. That's right. you can go back yeah, you can watch that's it after. Right. We'll just jump on each other's shows. Uh, you can, and uh, that's right. We also have all of uh, all of our players are also performers from the Renaissance festivals from all over the country. So uh, you might be local to one of them. You don't know. So come on, check us out there. Uh, but we also run uh, tours uh, to Europe when that such thing exists again. And uh, we we actually play Dungeons and Dragons in castles. Uh, we visit cathedrals. We go see uh, ancient pubs. Uh, really, like the the oldest pub in Carlisle. It's like it's only a mere three hundred years old. Uh, it's really cool, and uh, we have all sorts of crazy adventures. And then play Dungeons and Dragons in the castle that I'm a jester of uh, in England. So uh, join us. It's a lot of fun, and that's called RenAdventures.com. And we have all sorts of other tours as well. If if you don't feel like playing D and D, you can just come out and hang out with us in Europe somewhere. Uh, but yes, Dungeons and Dragons Scotland and England tour is coming up in July of next year when it's safe, and it better be safe. Yeah, <laughs> and we're allowed to travel to Europe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so, so lastly, go. would be plugging myself. Uh, I have had some space open in my schedule, so I do uh, GMing. I'm a GM for hire, so if you're interested in the game, I can set something up for you. Uh, I'm also working on some uh, collabs with Paulo. But we can let you know when we figure out exactly when and where 
We've got some fun ideas, but we don't have dates and times yet. As soon as we do, we'll let you know. Also, I'm running a summer camp, a d and summer camp for kids uh, through Deep Eddie Psychotherapy. If you're interested, especially if you have a kiddo uh, that's looking for a safe space for uh, good work on social skills, uh, it's role playing is one of the best places for kiddos with those challenges, like the way they light up and the way they feel empowered by playing like that is something special. And uh, the summer camps are week long. And if you're interested, you can um, reach out to me at uh, Look I'm Wandering Wizard on Facebook. That's probably the best way. All right, thanks for everyone. And I look forward to the next game and to see what happens to the goblin community. Take care, we'll see you soon in the wasteland.